Welcome to the Future You YouTube sessions. Today's guest is Tanya Mimi. She's a typical slasher with many jobs, interests and income streams. And on her website, slashercareer.com, she helps many people start their income streams. She is an expert in blogging, traffic generation, monetization, e-commerce and any kind of online business. Welcome, Tanya. Hello, thanks for having me. Why would you say it's important to have more than one income stream? They say that an average millionaire has seven income streams, which is um, quite interesting because you would think that you know, millionaires are usually business owners and, mm. and probably the majority of the money comes from business, but actually it's not like that. People try, to, as soon as they become a little bit more wealthy, they start diversifying right away because it's just not smart to have all your livelihood depend on one income. So I, I just personally think it's smart to have um, more than one income streams. But I also think that a lot of people have more than one interests, but for the very long time, they have tried to narrow themselves to this one thing, thinking that it's wrong to do more. It's wrong to be like doing one thing from Monday to Thursday and then do totally different things from, I don't know, Thursday to Saturday, you know? Um, so I, so that, so that too. So, so it's, it's, it's actually better for your mental well-being if, if creativity and doing many things is something that you're into, but it's also good for your wallet. Um, so there's two things to uh, multiplying your income streams, which is why I do it. Yeah. So what has having these multiple incomes allowed you to do? So many things. So more money, more freedom, more power, dignity. Um, by dignity, again, I, I mean that I can be, uh, I, I have the final say of how my day is um, rolled out. Um, so I set the rules and employer either, um, you know, I guess I say employer because I um I, I'm still employed uh, by an agency uh, two times a week. Um, and I, I'm not one of those people who think that employment sucks or like, oh, we should all be entrepreneurs. I don't think so. So there, there will be always people who want to start something on the side. And even if it takes off, they will still like to keep uh, getting a steady paycheck from someone. And it's absolutely fine. That's what I'm doing at the moment as well. So, but it has allowed me, kind of empowered me um, to set my own day rate, set my own requirements, how I want to work, how many days a week. And it has all been met by companies because I'm bringing a, a skill set that is very difficult to find in other people. Mm -hmm. But actually, most importantly, why it's also empowering is that I can pick companies that I want to work with. Mm -hmm. So I don't go for any kind of company that I don't believe in. I can really choose that. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of good things that comes from having many income streams. Have you enjoyed your time going through all that? Oh, it's so much exciting because you always have to think like, where do I want to take my brand now? What should I say? What should I try? You can figure out on the way what works. Uh, but if you work for somebody else, then you're really restricted, right? Yeah. So what would you suggest for someone who wants to take their first step towards starting their side hustle or their side startup? What I would suggest is start small don't quit your day job. Don't quit until you make enough money to live on that money consistently. Um, not just like, oh, I made um, 2K this month. I should leave a job. Well, but if you made 800 last month, then it's not a consistent income yet, right? So you have to stay on your job a little bit longer. Another thing I would also say is find your tribe online, uh, go to meetups, find people who get you, who do the same thing. And do you mean meetups as in the website meetups? Yeah, it's a web website called Meetup and uh, they host a lot of events in, in actual physical space. Yeah. Um, and they're usually free or very cheap. So it's a, it's a good way of meeting people who are basically like you. Yeah. Girl. So yeah. I would really recommend that if you start out because you might feel a bit um, um, a bit like lonely and not sure why you're doing it. You know, like you have a full-time job and then it's weekend or Sunday and your friends go and, and have fun in the park, but actually you go to a cafe to work on your side hustle. And then you feel like, Oh, you know, you, you don't always feel that, that you want to do it. Yeah. Um, and, um, 
And another thing is because there's no, uh, nobody's saying how awesome you are or that your writing or whatever you're doing is awesome, then you, you start questioning whether, whether what you're doing is the right thing. So what's going to help there is that tribe, the people who do the same thing so you don't feel alone and you can check out with them, meet up with them, and you kind of create this good circle of friends. Another thing, actually, I would also recommend if, if you're building your business on the side from, um, on, from the full-time job um, to maybe block out Sunday or Saturday and go and work from ca coffee shops as opposed to home. It yeah. just creates a totally different environment. You're still surrounded by people. They all kind of look interesting. There's good smells. Coffee's nice. which kind of gives you buzz and, and, and energizes you. Also nice co coffee shop music. Uh, so it's very different from working from home, which creates this feeling of like, oh, life sucks. There's no space. I live here. I do everything here. So get out, um, get out, you know? And th then it creates this feeling of like, like, like it's a treat because you buy yourself a nice coffee, you buy yourself nice um, cake. So, so your, your, you, um, your brain will soon start associating working with actually nice things alongside it. So I re definitely recommend that. What would you suggest for someone who wants to get more people to their blog? So pick maybe two to three social media platforms that you yourself enjoy and understand, but also think whether your actual audience lives there. Um, so, so a lot of people spend a lot of time on Pinterest, for example, uh, whereas I, I maybe wouldn't, but maybe I should if my target audience is there. Uh, so, so don't overwhelm yourself with too many social media platforms because then you feel like you can't give your all attention to the platform, but pick the ones that you uh, use yourself, you like, and your target audience uses. Publish content regularly. Make sure your content is this good that people will actually comment, share, like. Um, so, so try to say things that are a bit out of place or a bit different than other people in your industry are saying, because that will um, draws attention to your brand. Um, so social media is good to build uh, kind of the tribe, if you like. And, and if they like you, they'll go and check out your site. Another thing is obviously what I would actually recommend is that if you have something interesting to say, pitch yourself to be a guest on podcasts or, uh, or radio or TV if you have something really amazing to say. Uh, but podcasts should be easy because they are run by peers like you. And uh, some of them already has a massive following. So, so, so just get yourself out there. And another thing um, is, is, is writing in a way that your article will rank for, the, for that topic you're mm -hmm. talking about. So let's say um, you are uh, selling uh, holistic uh, health coaching with nutrition at its core and you write an article about similar thing and you know that when people type that in and they type that in maybe a thousand times a month that's thousands potential people on your site um if your if your article for that particular topic could be on the first page of google when people search for it then you'll get a very uh, targeted very good quality traffic because you know that when people come that's exactly what they wanted to find um, so that's a skill in itself to write for search engines. And that's something that I'm quite good at. And that's something that I'm teaching people as well. So I, I recently wrote an article, how to, get, how to get consistent traffic to your blog, uh, without actively promoting it. Um, so if uh, anyone wants to read how to do that, I have a blog about that on slashercareer.com. So I would really recommend looking into that and, and learning a bit about SEO content writing. Um, but of course there are other bloggers who don't care about SEO and they mainly, they target audience are maybe brands who would send them clothes or, um, so they're those Instagram influencers who, who may not even have so many, um, their, of their own audience on their website. Maybe they even don't have a website. But what they're doing is that they're creating uh, uh, impression as if they're very popular and brands seeing it and without doing much research, paying them mm -hmm. to advertise their product um, on, on their 
you know, Instagram posts. I'm not sure about that business model because a it doesn't it's not set up in the real value. It's yeah. short lived. Yeah. Something can happen to your Instagram um in on Instagram and you can lose all your followers, but you don't really have the followers of your own. Mm. Um, because you don't have a website, you don't have an email list, yeah. you don't own your audience. It's kind of just somewhere on Instagram cloud. Mm. Um, and it's just fake. So, so, so people like that, they don't need to care about SEO. They just need to care about impressing brands. How important is it having an email list, do you think, with regards to your website? Oh, it's absolutely crucial. Now, the new trend is that people don't um, post any content on the website. They say that um, all, all my content will be in the email. So you have to sign up to me if you want to get my content. And I think it's quite genius way of getting um, people. And maybe it's easier for people who already have a, a big name. So if Mark Zuckerberg will do that, a lot of people will sign up. So, um, so it's extremely important for so many reasons because you can't rely on social media to give you traffic because things change, social media channels disappear, algorithms change. Um, so that's one thing. Um, it's, a, it's a great way to build your brand so people know you. So for example, if you say, guys, I'm leaving, um, I'm leaving Instagram. If you want to still be in touch, go there, sign up to my email list. So, so it's obviously good because you have some kind of tribe. Mm -hmm. Again, you can't always rely on search engine traffic because they change uh, search algorithm as well. Um, so you might be ranking for your keyword uh, at the moment, but that might change in three months because um, Google can change the algorithm. So again, you can't rely on getting traffic only from Google. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is that I mean, you always have an option to advertise your content, but again, you have to be very good at it in order to make it profitable. And may not many people have an extra money to advertise their content. Yeah. So now it boils down to what is that something that you will always own and you will always own your own email list. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it's a perfect way to stay in touch with people because they have given you permission to email them directly. And that's the biggest um, kind of um, the, the best thing that somebody can tell you is like, hey, I want to be friends with you. You can email me directly because you know when you see somebody you like and you follow them on social media, that's just a first step of getting to know them. Now that you know them through social media because you like what they do, you'll be like, okay, I want to take the relationship further and then you sign up to the email list so that they can send you email directly and that's that's like almost the biggest compliment somebody can give you is give you their email address because it's in other ways it's saying, Hey, uh, I'm, I, I love you so much. I don't mind you sending me your offers because they're amazing or your content because they're amazing. What things could you do to build your email list? Well, I think it's offer them something by email that they can't get on your website. So for example, you can offer them one-on-one -on -one free advice on anything or coaching uh, give them a reason to join you mm -hmm. um, and build relationship via email. So send them, um, educate them without asking anything in return. You know, you don't always have to sell yourself on, on via email or anywhere. It's about showing you how good you are at your job. So people come to you when they need you. Uh, so you nudge them, then you nudge them on, on email and it's a perfect way because much more people open their emails then people, you know, you, you can very easily get lost on social media feeds, um, whereas it's harder to get lost on people's emails, especially if email comes from some somebody that they want to get emails from. Um, so in order to grow your email list, uh, I would suggest to offer your people something that they want to do, but offer them for free. And if people want to get in touch with you, to ask you more questions, what's the best way to get in contact with you? The only way to contact me is to uh, sign up to my email list. In that way, I'm going to send you e emails and you can reply to those emails. Um, and by doing that, you'll also get an access to my free ebook where I explain how I started um, my first blog, 
um, how I monetized it, all my five different income streams at the moment, what they are and, um, and how, um, so a lot of kind of useful skills. And also there's a, a kind of test that you can do at the end that asks you different questions about what you enjoy doing, what are you Googling in the evening, um, that helps you to understand what is the side hustle that will suit your personality. Um, so it's a nice little ebook as well that you can get for free if you sign up. Great, well, all very, very helpful. Uh, it's definitely a great thing to be thinking about having different income streams at this point in our lives. Uh, so thank you for your time today. Oh, thank you, Michelle, for inviting me.